Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're going to continue our series looking at Supermicro servers when they gave me the key to their demo room, and specifically, we're going to take a look at the Supermicro Big Twin. Now, the technical model number is the SIS 220 BT. HNTR, but Big Twin is just so much easier to say. Now, on the STH main site, we have definitely looked at the Big Twin series before, and what these are are specifically 2U four node systems meant for very high density, putting eight CPUs in a 2U space. And the Big Twin in Supermicro's lineup is always kind of really like the high end of those 2U four nodes. There's different, they have different options, but the, the Big Twin is definitely the higher end version of you know what they offer. And specifically, it's designed really to get you that maximum density and maximum performance out of the components that you put in here, whereas some of the other options that Supermicro has are, I guess, a little bit more cost optimized. So because we've looked at a couple of generations of these, what I thought was, I said, well, why don't we go and take a look at the new Ice Lake generation, which is the third generation Intel's the unscalable Ice Lake, and we're gonna specifically look at that offering. And so why don't we get over there and go take a look at it? Before we get too far in this video, I do want to note something that is super important. We are marking this video as sponsored. And the reason for that is that I don't necessarily live 15 minutes away from Supermicro anymore. Instead, I live in Austin, Texas. And so both I flew out, Joe flew out. And so Supermicro is helping us cover the you know flight costs and travel costs and stuff like that to be able to go and actually do this. But they basically just gave me the keys to the demo room. And so they also gave us the keys to the demo room and let us use these boxes. But they basically said, hey, you know, go do your thing. Go do whatever you want to go do. And they did not give me a script. This is all being done completely editorially independent, just like everything we do on STH. So I just want to be very clear that that's what's going on and that's why we're marking this as sponsored. With that, let's get over to Supermicro. And so the basic plan with this system is we're going to start at the front of the system, but then we're going to really focus, I think, a lot of our attention on the rear. Because in the rear of the system, this is a 2U server, but there are a total of four nodes and dual socket nodes in this server. And we're going to talk about some of the little changes in this Big Twin system that actually make it very unique in the industry. So with that, let's get to it. All right, so looking at the front of the system, what you're going to see is that there are a total of 24 U.2, so two and a half inch drive base. And those are basically set up so that they're partitioned into four different sections. So you can see on the top of the chassis, we'll have node A, B, C, and D, because there are four nodes. So each node gets six drives, six times four gives us our 24 drives on the front. Now there are a couple of things that you might not notice immediately if you didn't really know how these systems work. So let's just talk about those real quick. The first one is that there are little air slats that are through the system. So you see that not all of the 24 drives are spaced perfectly evenly. And the reason for that is that the processors are so warm that they actually need a little bit of extra airflow to be able to pull air that's not obstructed by the drives and get to the back of the system where they can cool the processors and other components. So although this is one single 2U server or chassis, you have to remember that this is totally set up as four completely independent or mostly independent nodes. So the reason that the 2U four node form factor is so popular is really kind of two main benefits. The first benefit is the fact that you get a lot of density because you are getting eight CPUs and only 2U and all the memory and all the PCIe and all that kind of stuff around it. But then the other one and the other really big kind of nice green thing about it is that you can actually put these chassis into your rack. And then when you do service, you don't actually need to take the entire chassis out. Instead, you're only taking you know, the little node tray at any given time instead of an entire chassis out, which makes it a little bit easier to maintain. And the other thing is that you have only two power supplies. So instead of having two power supplies per system, which would give you eight power supplies, you only need a total of two, which cuts your power supplies in, I guess, a quarter. Now, there are a lot of companies that have 2U four node systems out there because it's super popular in the industry. But at the same time, the 2U four node form factor, there are some major differences. And I'm gonna show you an example right here, and we're gonna start with the power supply. So one of the big innovations, let's just talk about first is this power supply. And the reason this power supply is important is because it's actually a custom form factor. It's elongated, so it's actually much longer than the width of the chassis. And the reason it has this kind of interesting shape 
is simply because that gives each of the nodes more width, and by having more width per node, you get more airflow and you can also fit more components. So even little details like the width of the power supplies in a 2U four node chassis becomes very important. Now, one other thing is just the way that the new big twins actually have a latching mechanism in the back is actually kind of new and way easier than previous generations. So you basically just push down one tab and then you pull out the node. And this is one of the four big twin nodes that's in this system. And you're gonna notice a couple of features right off the back. First, starting on this side, you're gonna see that we have a high density connector, and that basically provides the system with both power and also a data connection to the main chassis. So that way, you know, you have to do things like communicate with the NVMe drives up front. You also have the redundant power supplies that you need to get power from. And that's all done using this high density connector. That high density connector means that there's less airflow obstruction, and therefore you can get more airflow to cool the processors. Now the two processors here, what, there's a nice little air shroud in the middle here. And I just wanna just call this out because this is definitely something that has been an innovation over the last couple generations. And the new air shroud that's used in the Big Twin is super nice. The earlier generation, like you know, if we're looking back to the Xeon E5 generations of these 2U four node systems, it was really common that you'd see these kind of like flimsy plastic airflow guides, but this is definitely a lot more rigid, a lot more substantial and easier to get in place and service. So I actually really like this design and this new design in the Big Twin. Now the processors in this, these are two Intel Xeon scalable, so third generation Intel Xeon scalable Ice Lake processors. And that means that we can get up to, I guess, a maximum of like 40 cores in this generation. So you get a higher core count than the previous generation of Cascade Lake and Skylake before that. And with these new processors, we actually get a number of new features. And one really good example is that we get a total of eight channel memory in the system. And that means that we get more bandwidth, we get DDR4, 3200, so we get higher speed memory in this generation as well. And that allows us two things. First, we get more memory bandwidth to the processors, which is always important, especially in high-performance computing applications. But the other thing is we just frankly get more capacity by being able to fit all that. Now also, because we have those thin power supplies and we have a wider tray and a wider motherboard design, well, one of the other kind of cool features is that we're not just limited to eight sl memory slots per CPU. Instead, we actually get two additional slots. And these two additional slots can be used with Intel Optane Persistent Memory 200 series or PMEM 200 to add persistent non-volatile memory to this system. Now you can either use that as a memory expansion or also one of the really kind of use, cool use cases at least is that you can actually use it as persistent memory that's high speed in the DDR4 slots. Now in STH, we have an entire video on how the whole Optane DC persistent memory modules work and some of the different modes that you can use with them and all that kind of stuff. And so if you wanna go deep dive into what that offers, you can go totally check that out. We'll link that in the description. Now, moving behind the CPUs, what you're gonna see is that we get two low profile PCIe Gen 4 by 16 slots. Now PCIe Gen 4 is another feature that we get from the Ice Lake Xeon processors. And that practically means in this generation, we can drive for 100 gigabit per second ports on the system without having to you know, oversubscribe our PCIe bandwidth. In the previous generation, that just wasn't possible. Now, the other thing that we have here is an A-Speed AST 2600 BMC. Now, this is a new generation of baseboard management controller. It's a little bit faster, and we do get a new generation of management interface on the X12 generation of boards, and that's what we have here. Now, in terms of rear I.O., we basically get a couple base features, but then there's another important feature on the back. So the base features that we get are we get a dedicated management port for that baseboard management controller that we just talked about, and so you get a dedicated Ethernet port for that. You also get two USB ports, and then you get a single VGA port. So if you have to go and plug in a monitor, keyboard, mouse, maybe USB drive in the data center and physically access the machine, that's how you'd go do that. The final big feature here is that we get an AIOM slot. Now AIOM is, I guess, OCP NIC 3.0 compatible. And so what that basically does is allow you to customize what kind of onboard networking you get. So you don't even have to use networking cards in the system, in the PCIe slots, you can actually use them just, you know, you can just use a networking card there and you can customize what you have. So you don't have like two one gig ports. If you're not gonna use one gig, you don't need to have those. You can put 25 gig ports in there. You can have quad ports. You can have all kinds of different configurations on this card without using up any of your PCIe slots. So it's definitely a little change compared to the previous generation, but it's also kind of an interesting one.
There is one other small feature that I almost missed, but I just want to show it real quickly. And that's on this PCB here that has the riser and all that kind of stuff. What you're going to notice is that we actually have an M.2 slot that's over here. So if you have to have boot media or something like that, you can actually have an internal M.2 drive on the system. But there's actually an opportunity to put another drive because we have one on the opposite side of this PCB. And so you can actually put two M.2 SSDs in here as well plus the six drives that are on the front of the chassis. So overall, it's really cool to see some of the generational improvements that happen in this big twin versus the previous generations that we've looked at. It certainly seems like they're taking some of the feedback and you know they hear about some of these like usability pain points and they've actually incorporated that feedback into the new product and you're definitely seeing a really awesome evolution of this line. And just the fact that you have the wider nodes means that you can put more components and it's actually way easier to go and I think service this. I mean, previous generations of this, we were sitting there and using all kinds of screwdrivers to get like these, these uh, at these PCIe risers and stuff like that. And you just don't have that here because there's a lot more of an emphasis on doing things toolless and easier to service. And so it's really kind of cool to see how that happened and is instantiated in this server. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Supermicro Big Twin Ice Lake Edition. There are some really cool features here, and I hope you like nerding out and taking a look at this with me. And if you did like this video and want to see the rest of the series, well, why don't you give us a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications, so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching, and have an awesome day!